All right, good morning and welcome everybody to the Health Transformation Webinar. This is your host, Cade Archibald, and I am so pleased and excited to have you guys on here today. We got some really cool stuff. We're going to be continuing our conversation on, on glyphosate, GMO foods, what this is doing to our health, and today we're going to be diving more into strategies on how to, how to get rid of that and how to um, cleanse and clean the body. So we got some really cool stuff. Um, before we jump in, um, we need to get um, uh, we need to get everybody um, knowing what's going on uh, in the future. So we got our retreat is coming up um, in yep. St. George. It's November 8th, Friday. Um, that'll be down here in St. George. And then in Salt Lake City, it is um, November 15th. So the next Friday after that. And it's going to be just an amazing experience, amazing time with some really cool education, exercise, um, and uh, just fundamentals of health. Uh, we'll dive into some, there's a cooking class where you cook what you eat, you eat what you cook. Yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully you're not cooking what you're eating um, in, in that order. You are in your stomach. <laughs> and then, uh, and then you got some amazing treatments, um, with acupuncture, uh, maybe some ozone, um, in St. George, we have our shockwave device that we'll be utilizing as well. So some really cool stuff. So, um, reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to me at Cade at, uh, gowellness.com, um, or Reagan, um, or just call one of our offices if, uh, you're, want to get set up for that, but um, it's going to be an awesome time, so don't miss out. All right, so now let's uh, let's bring on stage here, Reagan Archibald. Reagan, how you doing? Woo, doing really good. Yeah, I'm excited about today's topic. Yeah, this, this is a, a really hot topic right now. I feel like there's, um, there's more and more awareness happening with it, um, as well as I think there there's some things happening in this industry where you know Monsanto's is uh, it's getting gunned down. Finally, yeah. I mean, we got a long ways to go. It's a big, big industry, but but yeah, we're going to be talking about glyphosate again. Last week we talked about the dangers of glyphosate and how it's causing cancer, leaky gut, how it uh, absorbs and and uh, diminishes B12. Uh, we talked about how it turns off your CYP enzyme in your liver, so you can't metabolize vitamin D. So you can keep swallowing the vitamin D, but you're not going to metabolize it. Uh, we also talked about glycine and how that's an essential amino acid, and it's found in chicken sternums where you find it the highest levels of collagen. Um, and this glycine is as a critical component for tissue growth and muscles and tendons. And glyphosate is destroying all those things. And so uh, I promised you that this week we would talk about the antidote. Like, how do we treat this? Because we're all exposed to glyphosate. Um, I grew up on a farm in Idaho and was exposed to gallons of glyphosate in the summers, moving sprinkler pipe and spraying on the riverbanks of the Teton River. And so uh, today is the antidote. All right, Cade, you ready for the treatment? Can't wait. All right. Get going. Okay, so I've got uh, five core steps, and uh, we'll see if we can make it through all of these. But um, how many of you, first of all, were on last week, and you've been looking at labels more and being a little more aware of your glyphosate exposure? And I think the best news that I gave last week, too, was the fact that maybe gluten is not the problem, but it's the glyphosate that is actually disrupting the protein synthesis. Um, so, you know, maybe it's not, you know, maybe we all don't need to go, go gluten free unless we're celiacs, of course, but maybe it's actually more of the glyphosate, um, because grain gets cut down or spraying it. So I thought that was the best thing, you know, in, in the research I've done. So hopefully you guys are looking at labels more. If you have any questions, type them in. But first of all, the number one thing is you want to avoid genetically modified foods. And so this, the GMOs and, you know, there's been some uh, legislature around finally putting a label on a product that says it's from GMO foods. 
Um, of course, Monsanto's was the biggest and Roundup was the biggest company that said, no, we don't want to put this label on. This is silly. There's nothing harmful about uh, GMOs. And you hear it out in the media, how they try to downplay it. But this is a, a trillion dollar industry, the big agricultural industry. And they claim that, that our crop yields are going to go down if we start going organic. But what we've seen is now we're learning, you know, when there was the, uh, the landscaper and the, the, the garden, gardener um, who had a $250 million lawsuit against Monsanto, later that got turned into $78 million because it, it caused, uh, you know, he had uh, severe cancer from his exposure. So, so number one is you want to read the labels and avoid genetically modified foods. You can test yourself for um, uh, any type of glyphosate as well, but some of the crops that are going to be genetically modified are going to be your, your wheat, your oats, and these aren't necessarily their, their GMOs, but you want to go um, organic. So the wheat is actually sprayed once it gets cut down just to be clear. Same with oats, uh, lentils, peas, soybean is, is, and corn are two of the most highly GMO crops on the continent, on the American continent. Flax, rye, buckwheat, triticale, canola, millet, sugar beets, potatoes, sunflowers. And so some of the foods that you're gonna find this in is like your Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, Wheaties, Trix, um, Annie's, even Annie's gluten-free bunny cookies, cocos, uh, and vanilla. Annie's is a pretty good brand, but Cade, look at all the glyphosate that showed up even in that brand. Yeah, pretty substantial. Wow. 55.13 parts per billion. Like that's, it's pretty mega. It's more than Wheaties, uh, more than Trix. So eat Trix instead of Annie's is the kind of the moral of, if you want to. <laughs> it's wild, isn't it? These are all yeah. from General Mills. Now we go to Kellogg's, um, you know, Corn Flakes, Raisin Bran. You look at Kashi, which is organic, and that's their organic promise line. You're still going to have 24.9 parts per billion of glyphosate. Like, it's just way too much. And this is organic. So I'm, I'm like, well, that's where are wild. How is that sneaking in? Because there are, um, you know, regulators in, in this world of organic foods but it's sneaking into Kashi. So maybe there's other brands that we wanna consider, uh, like bake, making your own foods and not getting crap from a box is the moral of this slide. Um, yes. Special K, Frosted Flakes, Cheez-Its. Dominic is really bummed out about Cheez-Its. My, my son is always like, you're a Cheez-It. That's kind of <laughs> his biggest his insult there. I'm like, hey, what do you want? What, what should we eat for dinner? Let's eat Cheez-Its, you know? So. <laughs> So, no cheese its And then if you look at the cookies from Kashi, once again, uh, this is their organic uh, line from Kellogg's. Soft baked cookies, oatmeal, dark chocolate. Sounds really tasty, but full of glyphosate. That one almost, uh, it's, you know, top five on the list. Then you go to Nabisco, the Ritz, Triscuits, and Oreos. Um, so just avoid things in a box. The other thing you want to avoid if you're looking to get rid of GMOs in your life is you want to avoid vaccines because vaccines have tested positive virtually every single vaccine on the market tests positive for glyphosate so um so we're going to talk about how to get rid of it so i know some of you uh you know you're uh asking well what if i'm traveling outside of the country and i need to get this vaccine i'm going to africa um they won't let me in without it well there's ways we can we'll show you how to get rid of it but first is you know make sure you're watching the GMOs, because what GMOs are, are these, these are the genetically modified organisms. 91% um, of us want labels on GMO products. So if you have a chance to vote for this, vote yes, we just want to know. 80% um, of all processed foods in the U.S. contain GMOs. So if you're eating something out of, out of a box, whether it says organic or not, it's still processed. And uh, a lot of like, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot on like ketogenic diets and fasting and things like that. And even some of these um, quote unquote, like keto foods are heavily processed and still have GMOs in it. So even if you're in this nice ketogenic fasted state, but you're loading your body with glyphosate, you're still, it's, it's like you're still doing harm. So 53% uh, of Americans said they wouldn't buy foods containing GMOs. I wish that number was like 100%. 
and we just got rid of this thing because the environmental impact is we're got, getting super weeds, um, super bugs, super villains. So, and, and the biggest impact is on the soil. Okay, uh, you, you know this, on the soil of the ground, instead of having these good bacterial cultures and a diversity of bacteria, glyphosate is an antibiotic. So it's killing bacteria in our guts, but it also kills the bacteria in our soil and then yeast flares up. So we have uh, more yeast organisms. And have you seen that in uh, patients down there in St. George, a uh, little more yeast outbreaks? And uh, it, has it been a struggle helping them yeah. understand the importance of glyphosate with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What would you tell somebody? I mean, what, what are some of the risks of uh, a yeast overgrowth in the gut and the soil? Well, so if you have uh, yeast, well, in the soil, that's going to, um, it's going to show up in your food. And then every time you eat that, um, that's going to create it, um, in your body and in your body yeast, um, you know, that can, it's got really, um, it, it can cause leaky gut because they do have, they'll attach to your, your intestinal wall and that can, that can create leaky gut, um, or yeah. uh, intestinal impermeability, um, that can trigger autoimmunity. Yep. Um, gets your immune system really activated and it's it's crazy after looking at those labels of organically um, done things I know you know we use um, with our kids we use a lot of Annie stuff I, I'm like looking where where did you find that resource I got to send that to Sierra well so look she, um, a lot of it is uh, Sharon Senna yeah, yeah so MIT yeah, that's that's uh, crazy how much uh, glyphosate is in even just organic stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These big companies who go and buy organic farms, I'm like, man, you guys are cheating because we're still testing glyphosate. So, so yeah, really interesting. So number two is you want to eat organic food. So this goes without saying, but there was a study that was done, and this was actually in Australia, and it was. It was published in the journal Environmental Research, and they found that one week of eating mostly organic foods, mostly means 80% um, organic foods, re reduced the organophosphate pesticide levels in urine by 89%. So if you want to have basically a 90% improvement and decrease in your, in your glyphosate, all you have to do is eat 80% organic for one week, and you clear out 90% of the problem. So um, it doesn't mean, you know, if you eat the kashis and you're like, well, I'm hoping it's organic and it came from a crop that had less uh, glyphosate in it, you know, fine. But, you know, just to try and grow your own food is, is kind of a, a, a better way of ensuring that you're getting what you, what you want. Uh, the other way of looking at this is when you're going organic and you're trying to minimize the amount of um, glyphosate exposure, well, there's some, there's uh, the environmental workplace, uh, workforce, what they have is uh, the working group, and this is, uh, their website is uh, ewg.org, uh, but they have what's called the Clean 15. And so these are foods that have the least amount of pesticide res res residues. And so this is avocados, uh, sweet corn, pineapple, sweet peas, uh, onions, papayas, eggplant, asparagus, kiwi, cabbage, cauliflower, cantaloupe, broccoli, mushrooms, honeydew, melon. So that 20% of the time, if you're like, man, this organic um, lifestyle is really crushing me, um, then uh, here's some clean 15, some safer foods that you can still, you know, really rinse off and uh, you're going to have a minimal amount of residue that gets into those foods. So uh, these are some safer ways when you're, you know, when you have, have to make a choice between uh, which of the 80% do I want to not go organic, this would be the clean 15 there. And one of the things that we have here in, in Salt Lake is Trader Joe's. Man, Kate, I don't know if you've been to Trader Joe's, but holy smokes, like um, their organic food is uh, right on par with any non-organic products in typical grocery stores. I mean, uh, very inexpensive, uh, easy to find stuff, uh, you know, so, so it's, um, you know, it, it can be doable. Do you have any other resources that you like to find organic foods in? Yeah, um... So in St. George, we have a natural grocers yep. and um, yeah, it's, and then Harmon's is, has been a, another uh, pretty good resource. Um, natural grocers, uh, sometimes we found stuff uh, a lot less expensive than Harmon's. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's definitely, it's not the, it's uh, less than whole paycheck at least. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that is whole foods. That's Katie. whole foods for those, those of you that <laughs> don't know. Un- the entire paycheck gets vacuumed up. And like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got rent or do I, yeah. So, um, but, but there's ways of getting creative, you know, thrive market. I'm a big advocate of find a community garden because that food is so good. And at our last retreat, we used all the food was sourced from this, uh, this local community garden. And, and it was uh, incredible because that local community garden, we had a chef come in and the food was just amazing. It was the best food. So it's always better if you grow your own or use a community co-op um, garden. So the third thing is you want to eat sulfur rich foods. And these are like eggs, organic cheese, onions, and garlic. We'll, we'll talk about this, but what happens is the sulfur helps you make glutathione and glutathione is a master antioxidant that helps clean and purify your body and so what we found is that if you have insufficient sulfate in your brain it will decrease your body's ability to remove metals and heavy toxins this is why many of you when you've come into the clinic we put you on a heavy metal cleanse with glutathione and that's you know glutathione is made from uh, this uh, this these sulfur foods um, if you have glyphosate and pollutants in your body, sulfur is going to be the key component for detoxifying your, your body. So every day you want to eat cruciferous vegetables, like, you know, you want to eat watercress, spirulina, radishes, pumpkin seeds have a lot of, of, uh, sulfur in them, onions, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, horseradish. Um, these are just a few that you can add in. You know, we got Brussels sprouts, um, garlic, cloves, uh, peppers, um, so some fun things that you can get in your diet. Some of the other foods you can get is the eggs, uh, flax seeds, walnuts, uh, red meat um, has a lot of sulfur in it, uh, legumes, uh, certain dairy products. Um, be careful on some of the dairy. Obviously, we've talked about that a lot in the past. And then fruits and seafoods have quite a bit of sulfur in it too. And, and so these are some of my favorites to consume. But make sure with your with your sulfur rich foods these need to be cooked in most cases so especially your cruciferous vegetables um, there's a reason why we can't get horses or cows to consume cruciferous vegetables goats no problem they can eat anything but um, horses and cows they uh, there's uh, goitrogenic properties in these foods so it can actually disrupt your thyroid production of, of uh, thyroxine so uh, make sure you're cooking these because that will help uh, reverse and neutralize uh, some of the uh, goitrogenic properties there. Uh, Kate, how do you like to cook your cruciferous vegetables? Do you have any favorites like cooking your broccoli or kale or cauliflower? Yeah, so um, favorite things. So with uh, like cabbage, um, my my favorite is uh, um, actually bake it so you can you slice it up. You can put like some seasoning on it, slice it thin, um, bake it. That's that's actually um, really good. Then you can put some really good um, fats and oils on it after it's cooked. Yep. Um, another one, the air dryer, um, or the air fryer. Sorry. Yep. With Brussels sprouts, like that's that's really good. Yeah. Really good. Um, and you can you can pick up an air fryer for pretty cheap, and it's like literally takes ten minutes. You throw throw the Brussels sprouts in there, put a little. Um, salt whatever seasoning um cook them put put a little bit of olive oil um and butter in there and oh man it's good it's makes a little bit of honey um some local honey that adds a little sweetness there oh it's those are really good really good so um easy ways of making these but um dr stephanie senna who's arguably the the world's leading researcher on glyphosate uh, she's a scientist out of MIT. Um, she says one of the most important things to protect yourself from the harmful effects of glyphosate is to get enough dietary sulfur. So, you know, we recommend one to two pounds of vegetables every single day and make sure a good portion of those, about half of those are sulfur containing vegetables at least. Um, okay. Number four, try some apple cider vinegar and pre and probiotics. And there's, uh, there's a nice bacteria in apple cider vinegar that actually eats up glyphosate. So um, for those of you who have, 
you know, I'm sure everyone has heard of the Bragg's brand of apple cider vinegar. They've kind of, uh, you know, they put apple cider vinegar on the map, but it's got to have the mother. It needs to be fermented. You don't want to just use like cleaning type of vinegar. But um, apple cider vinegar is something that I wrote about in my book, Your Health Transformation, uh, several years ago. And this is uh, part of our overall liver detox process is where you do, you know, you, you take about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, you take a teaspoon of lemon juice and a tablespoon of, of uh, or a couple, uh, you know, an ounce of uh, uh, unsweetened cranberry juice, and you mix that with spring water, and that's a great liver detox. You'll feel awesome on it. Yeah. It also will help get rid of glyphosate. And so, um, Kay, do you, do you use apple cider vinegar much? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I try to take a, like a capsule full or a shot of it um, each day. That I, I did not know it ate up glyphosate. That's awesome. I, I knew you know, it's, um, it can help with uh, neutralizing acidity levels in the digestive system. It's really good for um, uh, liver health some things there, but I did not, that's, that's probably why it is so good for the digestive system is it'll neutralize glyphosate. That's awesome. Yep. Exactly. Neutralize it. it will pull glyphosate in. And then if you can take like extra glutathione, activated charcoal, um, it's a great way of, of reducing your glyphosate exposure. And I noticed with apple cider vinegar, I've been using it about 15 years at least. And uh, every time I take it, I'm like, man, I just digest my food better. I feel better. And 15 years ago, we didn't know all of the dangers of glyphosate. You know, I had my own uh, breakthrough uh, around 2000 where I learned of all the, you know, some of the dangers of it, but we still didn't know where it was in foods, how much was toxic. I was still thinking it was probably the direct exposure I had from the Roundup, but now we're realizing that that Roundup just sticks to food. And then it's like taking a broad spectrum antibiotic every single day. So that's why I tell people avoid drive throughs you're getting food that is full of glyphosate. So you're basically going through a drive through you're getting some macronutrients with an antibiotic. So um, that's, a, that's your image next time you're, you're considering that, that stop. Okay, so prebiotics and probiotics are really important for um, mitigating uh, glyphosate. So some of the prebiotics that you can eat is, um, you can eat the Jerusalem artichokes, you can eat leeks, asparagus, uh, berries, uh, certain mushrooms and mushrooms are really nice in the fall, especially if you get some lion's mane, some shiitake, put those mushrooms in there. Um, those are phenomenal. Garlic, onions, uh, citrus fruits, dandelion greens. I like dandelion greens. They're very bitter. Um, chicory root, uh, jicama, uh, uh, daikon root, um, apples, uh, certain plantains and sweet potatoes are all amazing things. So you're going to find the pro... Oh, go ahead. No, we, we had a question uh, come in. Oh, sure. And uh, it was, uh, how, how can you get tested for glyphosate levels in the system? Assuming there's, there's a urine test, right? Mm -hmm. There's a urine test. And um, I, you know, I have not found uh, a lot of, I think like um, Quest Labs and LabCorp, they have a specific test for glyphosate. Um, if you'd like to do it. And so I would just get on their website or next time you're in, we can um, get that test ordered for you. Cool. Yeah, great question. Because yeah, now everyone should, be, we should be asking ourselves how much is in my body. But, but probiotics are great um, because they help replenish the bacteria. So remember when you take, when you eat foods that have glyphosate in it, it's like taking an antibiotic. And so that's why probiotics and prebiotics made my top five list. And if you think about it, when bacteria starts getting destroyed, the bacteria make your serotonin, bacteria also make 90% of your dopamine. And so these are some of the feel-good chemicals and it will impact your brain health. And so you'll, you'll more likely suffer from dementia, from depression, anxiety. Your brain won't feel as good. And so you can find some of these probiotics in you know, certain yogurts, sauerkraut, kefir, pickles, kimchi. I love the sauerkraut, pickles, and kimchi. Um, tempeh, there's certain supplements, and then uh, prebiotics, bananas, but what's even better than bananas are your plantains. You can find it in onions, artichokes, garlic, uh, certain oatmeal, make sure it's not rolled oats, usually they're rolling it in gluten, um, honey, and asparagus. So there you go, Cade, your honey made the list. Nice. Yes. And so finally, just to summarize everything, 
Um, the, the real way to get rid of glyphosate is, you know, there's not just a one size fits all. It's, it's the healthier your overall body is, the better you're going to do. And so getting the right tests. So one of the tests would be how much glyphosate exposure do I have? But what would actually be more important and more critical and relevant is not to see what the agent is because most of you are going to have it. And so usually we'll say what the real critical test is, we'll say is, is get your blood work done. And from the blood labs, we can see how your liver enzymes are performing, how your liver proteins are doing. Uh, some of the uh, pancreatic enzymes are key. And then we look at a stool test because a stool test will show, do you have an excess growth of yeast or fungus? Um, is there infections in your body? And so then we, we get you off of those, the GMOs, because we're already just assumed that there's, there has been glyphosate exposure in every single one of us. And so then we'd say, well, let's make sure we're mitigating the glyphosate exposure as much as possible, but what has the damage done to my body and what do I need to do to correct it? So you get your blood work done, your stool test. You also want to look uh, at your genetics because if you want to uh, really mitigate the damage, then you've got to find out, do you methylate well? Do you produce glutathione or is your body producing more homocysteine? And then you go about and correct those things. So you want to correct your hormones, correct uh, any food sensitivities that you've got, correct in infections, fix the leaky gut, and, and then eliminate any of the glyphosate in your life. And that's how you can really have success from, from this thing called glyphosate. So hopefully that was um, helpful for everybody. Get your apple cider vinegar in. Make sure you got your clean 15 memorized and um, start eating organic, grow your own foods and then uh, get tested. Look at all the systems in the body and make, get your body as resilient and healthy as possible. So, all right. Beautiful, thanks so much, Reagan. Awesome, awesome resources today. Um, so we'll be back same time, same place next week. So we'll look forward to seeing you guys on then. Um, in the meantime, get registered for one of our upcoming retreats. Retreats, yep. Yeah. Um, November 8th, Friday, November 8th in St. George, Friday, November 15th in Salt Lake. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.